when not rebuilding storm-ravaged homes or frantically jabbing, jamming wads of cash under their mattresses this week, some Americans were reminded that we have an election coming up. As a service to our viewers, we'll be devoting time to highlight aspects of the election process as we make our way to November 4th, or as we're calling it, the road to the recount. Tonight, we focus on voting. The Electoral College. It sounds almost quaint, doesn't it? Like in a, an assembly of wizened and betweeted academics gathering to discuss the science of voting. And in a way, it is like that especially if the first thing that pops into your mind when you hear academic is University of Phoenix online. <laughs> but the Electoral College isn't a place. The term refers to a body of representatives from each state selected to cast votes for a particular candidate. So when you mark a ballot for McCain or Obama in November, or if you're from Cambridge, Socialist Party candidate Brian Moore, you're not actually <laughs> voting directly for that candidate, but for a slate of electors who will vote based on who wins the most votes in the Commonwealth. In order to capture the White House, a candidate must receive 270 of the total 538 electoral votes available. The amount of votes the state has is based on how many representatives they have in Congress plus their two senators. In Massachusetts, for example, we have 10 congressmen and two senators, so we're granted 12 electors and therefore 12 votes. In case you were wondering, Florida has 27. Or to look at it another way, the state that gave you hanging chads and these girls who robbed a Girl Scout. Can we give the money back? I'm kind of pissed. I'm not sorry, I'm just pissed that I got caught. <laughs> Has double the electoral votes uh, as the home of Harvard at MIT, in effect canceling out Noam Chomsky's vote twice. <laughs> Many believe that the Electoral College is a flawed leftover from an outmoded political system, a system where slaves were counted as three-fifths of a person, women were not allowed to vote, and the men spent, to sit, spent most of their time drinking rum and powdering their pretty, pretty wigs. <laughs> One criticism is that swing or battleground states, smaller and potentially undecided places like Ohio and Missouri, receive far more attention from candidates than large states that are seen as being sure wins for one party. As a corollary, this leads to a decrease in overall voter participation, as many voters feel that if their state is traditionally red or blue, then their vote will do little to sway the apportionment of electoral votes. Those who defend the college claim that the system protects states with smaller populations, as using the popular vote would cause the candidates to focus almost exclusively on urban centers with many inhabitants. In other words, Rhode Island, you're welcome. <laughs> One thing is sure, though. We live in America, and that means we have an enormous opportunity leading up to November 4th, an opportunity to find out who potential electors are and coerce them into changing their vote, either through threat of violence or the promise of money and sexual favor. <laughs> or we could reform our elections and put the leadership of the country into the hands of those most capable of deciding the American people. I'm not sorry, I'm just pissed that I got caught. Good luck, America.